I think it was the first time the team really found its way into the hearts of the club. Building teams is something I've learned to do across my career. Being invincible throughout the season is amazing. Maron Mielder has sent them into the semi-finals! I was always obsessed with football my whole life. When Emma came in, she changed everything. Chelsea are going to the Champions League final. Every team grows the most with that type of pain. I always say to players in those disappointments, never forget them, because you need that setback before winning. It's crazy to think this amount of good players can be on one team. We can't settle for the trophies we've won. We want to win even more. I don't look back with any regret. I'm exactly where I should be. I'm sure the process how I got this job is very different. It was different then to what it is today. But what I know is I got a phone call saying one of the players at the time, who was one of my former academy kids, um, Laura Coombs, had given him my number. And he called me up, Pete Stewart, and said, would you be interested in managing the team? And I remember coming to the training ground probably the following morning to have a look around. When Emma came in, she changed everything, really. She, she demanded what she wanted from the start. I was a young player, so he just wanted to impress, really, and I had so many older, experienced players around me. I had a lot of the girls telling me that she's coaching America, she's coaching Arsenal, so that was exciting. I had a successful career at Arsenal, and I think, for me, I needed a new challenge, and I knew, obviously, that Emma had gone to Chelsea. I'd seen her grow throughout her career and I knew what she was capable of and what she was hoping to build here at the club. For me, I wanted to be part of that. It felt like the right decision for that time, even if I didn't know how long I was going to do it for. I think because the club was starting anew, it was, it was building. We were obviously a professional setup and we were training day in and day out and we could improve and get better. You could see it developing. First of all, I don't think you can really appreciate the, the circumstances around that game. You're playing in a game where three or four teams could have won the league. It was a dangerous game, actually, because it was a game that we couldn't lose. We went into that game knowing a draw would be enough. It was a really tense game. Landed awkwardly here. Within five minutes, our backup goalkeeper, who got the start, because our first choice was injured, then goes down with a broken collarbone. Claire Farrow will make her Chelsea debut. What a time to do it. The goalkeeper who goes in after five minutes has barely played any football with us. Speculative, but accurate enough, and City are ahead. And we didn't do enough that day. Oh, that's a fantastic goal. It's all going horribly wrong. He went with the corner, Jilly Fad, he buries the header. Game on again. Some things could have gone our way. G's round the back, she's kept it in, that's Williams. And it's not cleared yet, and Chelsea's still pushing. That's Rachel Williams, it's not a goal. And we ended up losing. And the WSL title has slipped away. It was a devastating feeling. Ellie's in tears on the floor. You know, it was hard to say something in that moment because everyone was absolutely devastated with the result. I think, like I always say to players in those disappointments, never forget them, because they do come round again. And I said that to any, I mean, you know, my word, uh, we will be back here again. And I remember going to a restaurant with a team after in complete silence, and Paul and I put a napkin out and we talked about the players that we were going to sign. Sometimes from their moments is when you learn the most. I think that was probably one of those moments. I think without that defeat, maybe we wouldn't have accelerated our progress as quickly as we did, because you need that setback before winning. For the next season, I think by the time we got back and we started pre-season for the next year, it was we were ready. I think that every team grows the most with that type of pain. And of course, we could say it's the championship that got away, but we weren't ready. And that's the bottom line.
from the minute I could get up, the minute I could walk. I think I still hear it from my mum and dad, that's all I've ever loved doing. I would either be reading the back pages of the football, or I was watching football with my dad, or I was outside playing. But I was always obsessed with football. Playing out in the flats was something all the kids did, and the football pitch was the centrepiece. Hanging about across Camden, whether that's youth clubs, spent a lot of time in those places after school and the, just being around so much diversity. You know, it was it's a wacky place. And I wanted to play football, albeit recreationally, with my friends, and I actually realised at the time I couldn't do that, I was really struggling. I had a surgery to try and create fake cartilage so that I could try to absorb shock so I could walk every day. You know, the, my realities were, do you want to walk? Not, do I want to play football? And I want to walk and I want to play with with my son, so when you're faced with situations like that, it's devastating because, of course, I didn't get to play football, even recreationally anymore. I think over the years I've accepted it. At the time, I'm sure if you ask my family, they will tell you I had a really hard time with it for probably a long time. But now I just think it's meant to be. This is what I should have been doing, and I don't look back with any regret about anything. I just know that. I'm exactly where I should be. When I went to America, I had 10 plus years on and off coaching various different teams. The more I always reflect on it, I always think it's them 10 years that have given me the grounding. I was the analyst drive around everywhere. I did everything, carry my bag, balls, and certainly a, a world away from what I have now as a coach. But I think because of that, I learned every job. I think I had so much of a grounding because I coached from such an early age. That's been the foundation for me going into my 30s. Well, I came back from Chicago in 2010 and I really needed a break from coaching. That is such a clear memory. And I remember going down at Covent Garden, my father's bureau was like a madhouse of people coming and exchanging money every day, their holiday money, and I realised he didn't have a, an online portion of the business. So I set up Covent Garden FX, as it's now known, and I absolutely loved it. I loved working Monday to Friday and weekends off, off <laughs> and then I got bored of that quite quickly. I took the players to the dressing room and to the stadium because I thought it was important to visualise the most important things prior to going there. So I worked hard with the team about how to manage your emotion. If you want to take photographs, get it out of your system as much as you can. Familiarise yourself. Get out your anxieties today. Good? Come on then, let's go. We didn't want to be too overwhelmed the next day. So we went the day before and just took it all in and took all your pictures that you needed. We was told where the family were going to be sitting and stuff. So I think that helped a lot of us just to ease the nerves a little bit. I don't want you looking there. That's the distracted part. This is our national stadium. All of us have grown up watching men do this, play finals at Wembley, and we are the first female club side to play in an FA Cup final at Wembley. Hugely historic moment but one that I didn't want to become an occasion. How much will it mean to this team to lift that trophy? Uh, everything, you know, for a, a ladies' section to have no trophies, to get our first one here at Wembley, I think would be a special day to remember forever. For many around me, it was their first trophy. I could sense the anxiety, the worry, the doubt, the ambition all at once. It was important for me, obviously, as the captain of that team, to, to manage everyone else around me, to make sure everyone else was OK. And just making sure that we were sort of calm and ready to, to go out and play. Being in a world-class environment and having the likes of Chaps, G So Young, you know, you couldn't really go wrong. Emma's a big believer in understanding what it's like to be in a big first moment. 
Our big first moment was an FA Cup final, a massive stage um, in a women's game and, and for us as a club. Yeah, Emma was a, a big believer in preparing us for the environment, the atmosphere, kind of the tension that was going to come with playing in a final, the emotions that come with that. And I remember Emma's last words were, don't look into the crowd. You know, you come out, you do the lineup, you look forward, you don't look into the crowd, you don't get caught, get the job done. And that I picked a spot for the team to focus on so that as soon as we walked out and as soon as the national anthem started, we focused on something that was to keep our minds set. And I looked across at the opponent and I saw them waving to their mum and, and I thought we're going to win the game today. Luca on the move. She's round Telford. And Luca once more up against Bassett. And round up. And then try to find G. She came to the club, she had unbelievable talent, and she was so, so easy to get on with. Me and G, we call each other sisters. We played midfield together, so she made me do all the running, and she had the one that looked pretty on the ball, so it was, it was, we always had laugh about that. She's unique in personality and profile as a player. I promised her we would compete, even if I knew at the time she was coming into a club before we were quite ready for her, that she trusted me. And in turn, our relationship has always been, you know, uh, very important to both of us because uh, she has been instrumental in the in the titles we have won since I've been here. And try to find G, and G again, and Chelsea lead. I actually do remember the knee because I actually have a scar because the pitch was a bit like sandy. I mean, I guess I can take that on for forever. Well, I remember saying to the team at half time, when your legs start to suffer in the second half, I want you to visualize their captain walking up the stairs and you're gonna stand at the bottom watching her lift the FA Cup. And I want you to remember that every time you feel the game sapping your legs. And it was hooked off the line by Davison. And there it is. The first Wembley winners of the Women's FA Cup are Chelsea. And they have their first piece of major silverware in their history. I darted towards Emma, and I think I ran so hard and ended up on her back. I think she accused me of giving her a whiplash. It was a thank you as well to her because she made me captain, obviously, of the team. I love that picture because G is in the background. I think she's just, you know, it looks like she's been placed there. The reason I brought G to the football club was for moments like that. So I think it was the first time the team really sort of found its way into the hearts of the club. My personal opinion about pressure is this, that it starts with, for me, I understand what it means to work for Chelsea, but at this stage, we were still in our infancy, building a team, competing on all fronts. And I think I remember Bruce at the time feeling that maybe this, this success, this title came maybe a year earlier than perhaps had been planned. So, yeah, the club have just, as always, supported the team, been proud of the team. Chelsea's about trophies and about winning, and I wanted to develop, and, you know, Emma's an unbelievable manager at doing that. She expects us to, to want to win every trophy that we, you know, take part in, and... Yeah, I think winning it early on, it set the tone for the for the rest of the season and, you know, the rest of the years to come at this amazing club. League title next? Yes, that's the next one. You know, Fran Kirby's back now uh, and will be available for selection next Sunday. So I think that's going to give the girls a real boost on top of being FA Cup winners. Say that again. FA Cup winners, yeah! You know, when I first joined the club in 2015, I never thought, you know, it would go the way that it has, that I have achieved what I have achieved at this club, won the trophies that I've won. The day Fran made the decision to come here, I really, she knew how, how much I wanted her to join the club. And every day she's here, she's a joy to be around. She wants to win at such a level that she hates anything that's mediocre amongst 
her teammates and that will to win, that expectation, that standard is for me what Chelsea's about. For me, the big thing is the, the culture, the people that we have around one another, both staff and players. Emma expects that of every single signing she makes. You've got to be a good person um, to come into this environment. And that's what it is here. It, it is a family. It's not, it's not just words that we say in interviews. It's, you know, that's speaking from the heart. That is, that is what Chelsea is. I think winning the first title is extremely difficult. Davison. Good work from her. This was too strong though. What a touch from G. Oh, fabulous. A real touch of quality. It's really, really hard to come from that high of winning the FA Cup to having to come back and play in the league games. But I think with football, you know you have to keep going. You want to finish on a high. Chelsea have the champagne on ice. And if they hold their nerve, they should get the victory to clinch their first WSL title and, of course, the double. In comes across, and it's one well now. G gets the goal for Chelsea. Oh, it's a great effort by Kerrigan. What a terrific goal to settle the title race. Blue is the colour. Champions of their name. We've shown that women matter. Women's football matters, and women's football matters at Chelsea. I know for me, the minute it's over, I, I just want to usually go home and go to sleep, to be honest. I just want to recover, because it's not the trophies that I'm interested in. If that was my motivator, then I probably wouldn't have been able to find that intrinsic motivation in myself, because it starts with me before I influence the team. My intrinsic motivation is improvement and progress and just players, people progressing. That's what I enjoy the most about the job. I've never experienced a night like that. Marin has been a superhero. Being invincible is amazing. I think we should be incredibly proud of ourselves as a club.